Hello and welcome to Jamie's Motion Graphics episode 56. Today we're making this. All of this has been made in After Effects and all of this has been made from scratch. Do you want to know why? Keep watching and I will explain step by step how you can make it yourself. Okay, here we are in After Effects and we are going to just start off with a new composition. I'm not really sure what this is going to be. I have something in my head, but I'm not actually sure if I can uh, pull it off, but we'll see. We're going to make it one minute of time. It's going to be a lot shorter than that, but I just want to have enough time to be able to do my animation and not have any, well, time shortage. Anyhow, we are going to start off by creating a background layer. It's going to be really simple. It's going to be some kind of either black or white. I think black is better. Yeah, you can keep the old one. The advantage is that you can actually do something with this one. So uh, yeah, it's not a big advantage, but uh, yeah, you can always add it later. Then um, our first animation let's call it let's uh oh we can actually what we're going to do it differently never mind i'm going to pick a uh, middle middle grade something so i'm going to delete my background for now yeah might as well uh what we're going to do is we're going to build up the effect here then pre-compose it and use the effects in multiple layers well multiple things whatever um First of all, let's uh, let's make this first circle. So I made a mask, as you might have noticed. I'm going to go to shape, and we're going to make this first one a hundred diameter. So that's five ninety three ten, six ninety four ten, and um, yeah, that is a very small one. Then uh, we're going to make a second one. So just duplicate, Control D. And change the bottom one. We always want to change the bottom one because we're going to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So the next one is going to be 200, which means 540, 260, 740, 460. And it is going to be OK. So yeah, the layer, the solid settings should be probably a little bit lighter here so that we can actually see it. And then we're going to duplicate that one. And we're going to take the bottom one once again. We're going to keep taking the bottom one. It is the small one. And the small one... Did I duplicate the wrong one now? Hang on. This, no, this is the small one. Yeah. Okay. I did, didn't duplicate the wrong one. So, we're, yeah, we want to keep one of the smaller ones there and then make it bigger every time. So, 490, 210, 790, 510. It's pretty easy to um, to make all these circles because I have all the values written down and it is useful for you to do that as well. So duplicate once again after we change the color. Oh, I duplicated the mask there. I want to duplicate the solid itself and let's click shape once again. So the next one is going to be 400, which means 440, 160, 840, 560, I want to say. Yeah, there you go. And we're going to change the color on that, making it a little bit lighter again. And you can see here the difference in color. So make sure that you can actually see the difference in color, because, well, that makes it a lot better. So, um, yeah, once again, click this, duplicate, hit the M, and then hit Shape. So we were at 390, 610, We have one more to go after this, and then I don't have them written down. Well, I don't have the 50s written down either, so the, like, the in-between ones. But you can do that. I only have six of them and that seems to be enough normally. So yeah, there's that. Duplicate this one, hit the mask once again and then as I said the final one which is going to be 340, okay, 340, 940, sorry, no, 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 first 60, then 940, then 660. There you go. 
and make it even lighter. So it is going to be like this. Okay, so the reason we're picking gray colors here is because we want to edit the colors in later. And by doing so, we have a very flexible solution here. So what we're going to do with these is we're going to feather them out, all of them. So let's just hit feather and set it to like, I don't know, five pixels, uh, a little bit more apparently. So let's, let's see where we want to be. We want to be, well, let's... That's insane. Okay. Oh, feather doesn't work for all of them? Seriously? I can only feather one at a time. Okay, you want to do that this beforehand. Uh, let's say 10. Yeah, this is going to be tedious. But hey, at least there are only like six layers, so at least I called it early. And you can see that it's kind of vague now. So that's exactly what I want. You could also apply a blur filter, which is fine as well. And if you just want a different look, then feel free to make it a different look, of course. So I want to have them come out from the middle and then go outwards. So we're going to just do that. Uh, I could actually just cut out every ring, but I don't think so make them actual rings because currently if I hide the top one, you can see that underneath it is still the next layer. You can actually cut out all of the layers by applying new mask and making us subtract, but I'm not going to do that. I think it uh, should be no problem. So first of all, we're going to go to the zero position. And at the zero position, everyone is going to be 0%. So all of these are going to be 0% and it is going to be scale. So uh, just select all your layers, hit S for scale and then hit one of the stopwatches. It is easy enough. So um, yeah, one second, I think, no, let's make it like two seconds, maybe even more. Okay, let's just go wild and make it five seconds. At five seconds, they're all going to be 100%. I don't know why everyone's 100%. Oh, I didn't scale them down, did I? Nope. So just set that to 0 and then 0 to 100%. Ta-da! And now we're going to edit the timing a little bit. Because obviously this would look terrible. So what we want is we want the smallest one, which is the one in front. It's this one. We want that one to appear first. So select all the others and drag them forward like 10 frames. 15 frames? No, 10 frames. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Actually, I, I need to see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then some extra. So yeah, I should probably take 15 and then I can get all of the other ones afterwards. Uh, it'll be fine, whatever. So yeah, we're going to just deselect one of the layers, and move the rest over 15 frames. Come on, you know you want to. Move over 15 frames, deselect one of the layers, and go on. And then deselect. Move forward 15 frames. Let's see if we're actually in the right spot. No, we're not. Um, and then the last one is going to be over there. I think the five seconds was a little bit over enthusiastic. But we'll see. So what's supposed to happen is they're supposed to appear one at a time. And we'll see if that actually is going to happen. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not exactly what I hoped for. But that's because all of these are way too far back. So I need to drag them forward. So let's say two seconds. And then at two seconds, this first one is supposed to be complete. Actually, it may actually have to be earlier, but... Um, yeah, let's not select anything, that would be the best. No, not select anything. 
Okay, there we go. So um, the first one comes in, the second one is already coming in, so now it's folding out oh, from the center. There you go. So the first two are actually still a little bit screwed up, and that may be because I accidentally dragged this one over. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm doing very well today. I'm not making mistakes at all. So, and you can see, oh, come on. Do not select anything. I hate it when it shows it. All the stupid crap. Yeah, this is actually what I wanted. Okay, so now we have this, and it will just stay there forever until we do something with it. So, now that we, we've done this, we can actually rename this, uh, this composition if we want to. And we're going to rename it um, Source. I don't even know what it is, so source it is. Now we're going to make a new composition and we're going to use source as, well, a source. You didn't guess that, right? So um, this one currently starts at zero seconds, so keep that in mind that we do immediately start with that. So the new layer that we're going to use is going to be our background and as I said Dark colors will do very well for the background here. So I'm going to make it black for now. And yeah, what I now have is a huge thing. So I can actually just scale this by hitting S and then scale it down, for example. I can also scale it up, make it huge, and make it, well, just take over the entire background. For now, we're going to do it like this, and we're going to duplicate it a couple of times. You know what I'm going to do with it exactly, but we're going to position them in different spots. Where's my selection tool? There we go. What just happened? Oh, I accidentally double clicked. Never mind. So I'm going to place them in semi-random positions. Of course they're not actually random, because I want them to fill the screen very nicely. Duplicate this one. Maybe move that over a little bit. And then uh, scale them a little bit. So don't want to have everyone the same scale. So let's just hit the S and go for some different scalings. I know big, small, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's different. Something like that. Uh, now I can shift them around a little bit. Just try to design something that's cool to look at. So currently they all start at zero, which is kind of weird. So we can actually drag that around a little bit as well. Keep in mind that we do have uh, these things well, activating basically at, um, at zero seconds and ending at like, I don't know, somewhere here, five seconds. So yeah, that's a long time. So we're going to have to quicken that at some point, which means that we're going to need to just do something with the, with the timing and then speed it up afterwards. But that means that if I now put one second in between them, that may actually end up being like a quarter of a second. So yeah, feel free to make them the, the, the time gaps a lot bigger than you would normally do and also don't make them completely symmetrical so don't do like one every second unless that's an effect that you would like to see so um, yeah these are the first five and we're going to do more of them but um, yeah, first we're going to add in some effect that actually colors them before we continue because I kind of forgot about that and you really don't want to forget about that um, yeah, <laughs> it didn't like me for a while there. So normally you would have to do tint, and there it is, to make it black and white, but because we already did that, we made it in gray tones, you can immediately colorize it. So um, let's do curves. If you're having questions about curves, there's a tutorial introduction to curves on my channel. It's actually pretty good, I think. So um, yeah, just go watch that. If you're having trouble with uh, with curves, what they do, how they work, 
things like that. So uh, what I want to have is just a nice color. I don't really know which color it's going to be. Currently this one is going to be pink apparently and maybe with a little bit of blue mixed in. So uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of that. Yeah, okay. Next. So uh, yeah, we're going to pick up the curves. Control C and then Control V it on everyone and then everyone becomes the same color, which is not what we want obviously. So uh, let's uh, pick up this blue and just drag it up. Okay, that's this one apparently. And now let's pick up the green drag it up a little and then pick up the red and turn it down. Maybe even remove one of the dots and turn it down even more. And then you can see that I kind of overdid it a little bit on the amplification because my edges are like super weird. They're super super white and it's actually not bad to keep it a little bit darker. Oh come on. Seriously I can't even hit the right spots anymore. So it's okay to keep it a little bit darker if, um, if that's what you're looking for. You can also invert the colors. You can um, so make the, the outer edge like black instead of white or well, blacker. And well, you can do basically whatever you want. I'm going to make a contrast curve here. So that's this one apparently. Then the green should come back a little bit. The red is probably an anti-contrast curve, just for the fun of it. And then you get a blue. That's uh, that's cool. And this one, that's this one. So um, yeah, making or changing the colors can also be done by the curves. Here, now you have a completely different setup because now the outer edges are a different color than from the inner edges, as in. We changed the setup completely. Well, this is completely ugly, but we may actually be able to do something about it at some point. It's just toying around a little bit with the colors. That's actually not bad. It's um, a completely different color. Now let's let's make another reddish color, green, maybe with a little bit of green in it. But more red. I want more red. Come on. Give me red. The purple was actually nice. Okay, cool. So we have five of them now uh, with completely different colors. And we might want to duplicate that. So just drag them to the top because we're going to offset them in time. And we're going to make the or fill up the, the the shapes, basically, the, the dead space. So I'm going to drag them all to about the same time. And then, yeah, let's let's see where they actually end up. So first of all, let's, um, let's drag them around a little bit. Yeah. I can, of course, change the color on them. Yeah, I don't have to. I can also change the size if I want to. For now, I'm just going to drag them to a position where I think they would look okay with their current size but I might decide to go with something else uh, currently over here and then the big one the big one should probably go over here somewhere and then this one should go over here something like that that looks fine so um, by the way if you're done with the first five just lock them you have this um, this lock and you can lock your layers so that you don't accidentally move them. So even if I click on this one, it won't move. Oh, that's the background, which I didn't lock. So currently, yeah, I can't click this one where I can click this one. So, for example. Just an example. Anyhow, let's uh, drag them out in time a little bit so that um, different things start happening at different times. And something like this. I don't know. Okay, so there's nothing over here, which is kind of a shame, but we might be able to get that in the next um, in the next one. So if you're like, okay, I don't want to work from these colors because, well, I don't want to be bothered with 
the same colors. Just hit the reset button and it will reset your color to well the original which is well just everything is gray again. There you can see it. So currently we're going to go with green but then a completely different green from the one in the middle. Um, let's do it like this. Something like that. I don't know. Then RGB make it darker and there you can see it's a completely different color green so the darker means that uh, you get less white in here which means that the color will actually shine through way more so let's go with the red make it a little bit brighter green or more greenish green and then maybe with the blue add in a little bit of blue oh it's actually pretty high already so um, yeah you can see that a little bit of blue goes a long way so if I take it out, it becomes a very ugly green. Well, for this setup, but if I put it in, you can actually uh, you can actually uh, make like a blue greenish color if you want to. And if you go a little bit further, it becomes more of a greenish blue. And what I wanted was something like this. So it's yeah, it's not entirely the ugly green color, like the very bright one. But yeah, it's close to it, and that's fine. So I'm going to take out the color and then add in some color afterwards, something like that. So it now becomes light in the middle and dark in the edges, because I reverse the effect. Once again, if you're wondering how that works, go to the tutorial on curves. I explain it everywhere, and I don't want to repeat myself for the people that actually do understand. So we are going to go to blue and make some blue happening. So you can see that it does get some weird effects. That is because I reversed the order and sometimes it can be a nice effect. Like I think this one turned out pretty nice. Pretty nice? Pretty, pretty nice I guess. Not nicely. Whatever. Um, no, that's ugly. Yeah, that's that's okay. So next, um, is that the one I already did? Probably not. No. Okay, a little bit more darkness. I want these colors to be a little bit more vibrant. Let's make an actual red one. So instead of the like semi red, just actual red this time. Okay, we will need to have a little more contrast. So I took out a little bit too much of the color. Let's make some contrasts. Actually, it's kind of overdone on the red. Something like that would be good. Okay, yeah, we can still see the different colors and that's exactly what we want. So next, uh, the next one is going to be this little one. And I like it, like a, a really bright color on that. So if we can manage to do that, that would be awesome. So something bluish, I guess. Come on, pick up the, the actual point. So the green is going to go down, the red is going to go down. Let's see what we have. You can see that it's a different color blue than the original one that we had. And if we brighten it up, it becomes lighter, as I said. If we put it down, you know, then it becomes more of a blue that I want to have. So we're going to do this, and then the darker colors can get in a little bit. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a completely different circle from the others. So let's pick up all five of them. Hit the S for scale and just go one by one, adjusting them a little bit to what I want. Oh, I didn't finish yet. Haha. <laughs> yeah, I still needed to do one. So I'm going to reset this one as well. Um, make it maybe a little bit brighter. No, I actually like it a little bit darker then. So yeah, um, red, red, and then blue, make it a little bit of purple. Oh no, we have a lot of purple. 
take out the blue, put in the green, make it yellow. That's a little bit too much. Okay, something like that. Maybe take out the, the coloring a little bit. Yeah, so you get that actual yellow in there. So yeah, you can make multiple colors by dragging these um, these curves in different ways. So for example, if you would put it like this, oh come on, oh, whatever, that was three points. Yeah, you get a different color center than the outside. So if you like that, that's how you do that. You only need one, two points for this, for doing this, but uh, yeah, I screwed it up. Um, not actually sure, actually. Maybe you need three. Okay, um, so scaling then. That's, that's what I was doing. So the scaling, as I said, we need to, uh, you know, we need to scale them one by one and get them to the shape and size that we want. I'm going to overlap a little bit with this one. Not too much though. It's supposed to be small. That's why it got such a bright color. Let's put this off center a little bit. Oh, that one was actually fine. Uh, next. That was already the one that I did. This one, yeah, I don't really like the colors on that one. But it can be functional, I guess, in the overall picture. So, um, yeah, just scale it to what you want and just see if you can make something nice out of it. Um, I don't know how this happened, but apparently it did open the scale button there for everyone. I guess I selected nothing. If you select nothing and you hit something like S, then it will open it for all layers. So uh, currently it looks something like this. They appear one by one, but also simultaneously. And yeah, it looks okay. So let's once again copy all of these. Oh, duplicate drag them to the top and unlock the old ones. So this time we're going to drag them over to here and just, I don't know, put them over here I guess. So yeah, this is not the start position, just like before I just want to have them all at the start position and then start dragging from there. So let's see, what can we make out of this? Um, first of all, let's drag them to new positions. And I'm going to keep the, so just like before, I'm going to keep the size just about the same so that I can, uh, I can already see what it's going to look like. And of course you can do this differently. There are multiple ways of doing things like this. Try not to overlap the ones that you just spawned, so like this one just spawned, you don't want to put one right over over it already. Um, that one I already did. This one. And then this one as the last. This is a big one. So yeah, as you can see this one goes underneath the other one. But I don't think I have much choice on this. Might actually just need to put it in the corner here. And let's make some colors. So starting with this one, we're going to reset the color. Can I just reset the color on all of these at the same time? Nope. That's what I thought, but this way I can actually see which one I've done. Okay, let's start with the first one, which is this one. And let's make it, well, we don't really have any red here yet, so let's put in some red. And we don't have something dark in this corner, so let's make it dark. And already it's kind of a good color. Also, we don't really have any purple here yet, so we can make this one actual purple. Maybe a little bit of a different tone. I don't know. Green, bye bye. Green, bye bye. 
No, actually the green is kind of good. I don't know. I think it's too bright. Still. Yeah, that's better. So it becomes a different type of purple pink something. I don't even know what it is. Anyhow, just uh, building it up layer by layer and if I don't like it I can always change it later. So uh, This one has a lot of red in it. So there's red here, there's purple here and it has a lot of blue around it. So like all these three are blue colors. But still I like a color like this. That would actually be pretty nice. A little bit of green in it maybe. Turn down the brightness a little bit. So yeah, this middle one is so bright that everything around it needs to be a little bit dimmed because otherwise it just becomes, yeah, too light and you don't want that. So the blue, I don't even know. I guess we need to keep a little bit of blue in it. Right, let's just keep this color, whatever. Maybe add some red in the center. Yeah, that's, that's super ugly. Control Z, for those of you unaware, will undo whatever you did before. It's the same in every single program, I think, ever. So, <laughs> yeah, you might want to remember that one. So let's uh, turn it to dark. We up it a little bit. No, 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 that's ugly as well. Get into the greens. Um, no, actually, let's make it yellow. So that's green plus red, I think. Yeah, something like that. And then take out the blue, make it more of a yellow. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if I take out the brightness a little bit more, I might actually be able to get some, yeah, some browns going. That actually fits very nicely. So next, um, that is this one. As you can see, there's no blue here, except for this guy, I guess. And yeah, we definitely don't want green. So let's take out the green. Let's put in the blue. And let's see from there. Uh, I definitely don't want to copy this color. So let's first of all get rid of the red and see where we are. So this might actually be good. Let's play around a little bit with this. Maybe a contrast curve. A little bit less. That's actually not bad. It doesn't really fit in the corner though. Maybe a little bit of red back. That's already a better fit because, well, it just fits better. This one is a little bit ugly to be honest. It doesn't really fit here. Maybe I should make it dual colored one here. Something like that. Although I really don't like this color, but let's put it some red. Maybe something like that. Yeah, I guess I guess it could work. I reverse the colors, that might actually work even better. Oh, no, 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 bad. Yeah, I'm just going to keep it like this. I, I think this corner is just lost for my, uh, for my taste. But hey, it'll do, as long as you have something right. So I'm going to make this one dark, because it has to contrast with the one on the, uh, on the middle and um, I want it to be dark enough so that it actually does contrast. Yeah, you don't want to hit the bottom here so make sure that you don't because then you get well this that the middle colors are almost the same and you do want distinction. I'm just going to do it like this it's way easier. So, like this. So you still have different colors, but you don't have any of the bright stuff. And you can, of course, feel free to do whatever you want with your, uh, with your curves. If you like to have a curve like this, 
then that's up to you. And they can actually result in some pretty nice colors, even though it's completely unpredictable, unpredictable most of the time, but yeah, it can work. So let's see what this results in. Okay, cool. And then some, and let's add in some red here and red in the middle. Eh, whatever. Come on, don't make two or three points in the same spot, guys. Ugh, I really hate it when it does that. Yeah, I'm like one pixel off. Yeah, oh, you didn't want to select that? Oh, I'm just going to make a new point then. Yeah, I guess this is fine. It's It looks totally weird, but that's because I made weird curves. Yeah, so let's fill up this gap and the few gaps that are still remaining. Uh, first, we need to drag them out a little bit. I like to do it like completely random because, well, that's the way I roll. I don't like to de over design things and just check whether it doesn't look stupid and if it doesn't then just oh, just keep it like that. I accidentally moved that one. I think they should move a little bit more though. Like just to keep up with... I mean I am uh, speeding up compared to the beginning. In the beginning we had these big gaps where nothing happened and here I have everything just following up very closely together like within the second most of the time. It's also a way to animate because it kind of amplifies the intensity of your well animation. And by doing so you will get a better animation as in it looks better but also uh, not doing it in the beginning makes that the richness of the animation in the end looks cooler. And, well, that's what we're going for, right? We're going for cool. The coolness factor. So, as you might have noticed, I only made one object here, and still it looks like it's... like every object is different. It's because I made different colors and different shapes and sizes and, well, not actual shapes, but yeah, you get the point. I hope. <laughs> I ramble a lot. I know, I know. So let's uh, put this big one over here. And then let's put the smaller one over here. And let's put the even smaller one over here. And yeah, don't worry about the colors because, well, they're going to be reset anyway. So this one's going over here, and then the small one... Okay. Wow, this is another big one? Okay, that one goes over here. Okay, and that looks cool. So just reset all the colors so we can see where we are. And we can see which colors are going to be surrounding our guys. Okay. Um, this one, then. it is this one, and it is going to be dark, because we need something dark. We can actually make something dark with, like this, I guess now we don't have any contrast in the middle anymore. Uh, I don't like it that my light colors are still so light. Maybe I can do it like this, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's terrible. Something like that. No. Okay, let's just keep it like this then. Okay, um, so what we have around us is basically every single color. Uh, except for yellow. I guess there's a little bit of here. So we can actually make this yellow. But we do want a darker type yellow. Oh, no blue and yellow. Oh, that's actually cool. I accidentally did that. But yeah, it works. I actually liked the, the previous one. This one. It's actually not bad. Let's see if we can amp it up a little bit. Oh, the red is also not bad. Ooh, that's actually ugly. Maybe add in some blue in the 
lighter parts. Nope, nope, nope. Going the wrong way. It was actually fine. Okay, let's go back to the yellowish color. I like this one. Completely accidental, but I do like it. And then let's take out some of the red. Yeah, that's actually good. Cool. I like it. I like it. I like this one as well. The one with the white ring in the middle. You can of course make multiple. I, I currently have one source file. You can make multiples and just instead of having uh, it become lighter and lighter to the outside, you can also make it darker towards the outside or just make it like light, dark, light, dark, light, dark and then use those here to make different types of colors with the exact same technique because I'm trying to teach you a technique not so much how to make this specific picture because well that's all good I mean everyone can make this picture they just follow along yeah that's that's the basic thing right that's basically how people learn they just follow along but they normally don't really pick up what the real lesson is so how to apply this curve, for example, onto another project. And I'm trying to teach you how to actually do that. So how to understand how curves work and how to use pre-compositions and pre-made effects to uh, make something nice. I don't want this to be too bright. Actually, that is way better. So much better. Okay, so much worse. That's actually really good. I like that. It's a super bright color and it really fits the theme that that corner part has. So let's do this one then. That's the one in the corner. Top right. For those of you not noticing that. Um, yeah, let's do something like this. By the way, feel free to combine this with any other effect that you can find. Like, yeah, if you want to uh, put some kind of uh, mesh over it or uh, like a pattern, that's, that's fine too. Oh, this is, this is starting to become really ugly. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, you can just reset by hitting the reset button obviously but too often I um, I personally try to fix things when they're like unfixable like yeah you screwed up just get over it especially with curves because curves is really a difficult thing to work with cool oh my god that's good I love it. I'm going to up the scale on that. And then put it over here so that it actually overlaps a little bit more. You don't have to get every single one of these black spots, by the way, if you don't want to. It will look fine even if you leave something open. Okay, this one. Man, I can't believe that actually turned out. To be good. See, and that's why I reset because then every now and then I get lucky the next time. Okay, bright pink. Can we improve that? Not like that. No, I like the bright pink. Let's go back to that. There's a lot of pink in this. Huh. I don't know why. Maybe it's a subliminal message. I really don't know. Uh, so this one which is the last one and let's um, make it good something yellowish wouldn't be bad and a little bit of green to amplify the effect now I want some green in there we green up the dark colors while taking it out of the yeah, something like that. Not so bright though. Okay, that's cool enough. 
So um, yeah, that's all you need to do to make something like this. It's not that impressive, but um, it does look nice and you can definitely make something out of it. So um, yeah, let's see what it actually looks like and uh, oh, let's, let's skip some stuff. Uh, skip five. No, that's not how that works. Um, I forgot how to... Well, I'll, I'll just scroll through it like this so I can see what it looks like. It just keeps moving and moving and moving, which is excellent. And then it's done. And then at this point you can uh, you can put something on it, like, I don't know, your logo. Obviously you don't have to do it this multicolor. If you make it something nice and then you put over a logo with uh, some kind of semi-transparent white stuff, uh, let's 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 go to that just to show you what it looks like. So like let's let's take white. Actually, no, let's not take one of these. Let's take a shape layer. Shape layers, yeah, I really hate them. For those of you unaware, but yeah, for those of you who did see my uh, tutorials before. I do hate them quite a bit. So um, yeah, I do use them when they're useful, but most of the time they're just not useful. I do have a rounded rectangle here, and we're going to make this into, let's say, 15. So a nice big edge, and then the fill is going to be pure white with a black edge. Um, yeah, we can, of course, edit the rest here. So let's see, let's see, we want this to be in the middle, transform, and in the middle it will be, there you go. Um, furthermore, we want this to be transparent, oh the roundness, that's what I want here, something like that, 80 roundness. And yeah, what I really want is I want this to be transparent, like this. So at 60% I have, and then I want, because now my edge is also round, so I want to duplicate my rectangle, control D, and then for the top one, which is yeah, I can't see that here, of course, but for, uh, oh, it doesn't matter, never mind, it doesn't matter. For one of the two, you want to just delete the fill, just stand on the fill and just delete it. And then on that one, you want to make the opacity 100%. And that means that now we have a solid edge, which is, by the way, not black, I just noticed. And that is not what we want, but yeah, what we want is to have a black edge, and let's make it, let's, let's go to the other one, and delete the stroke here. So now we have one, uh, yeah, see they're, they're reversed, that's what I meant. So now we have one that is semi-transparent, or well, 60% opacity, and we have one that actually is the edge just the edge, no fill. And that would look like this. So then we go to the text and we say, I was here. Yeah, ugly letter type or font, I should say, but I like it. Okay, let's drag it into place. Let's change the color on it. Oh, well, it's still too big. Seriously? I had the huge letters for my typography videos. Um, yeah, let's make it something like that. It doesn't even matter. And now let's make the logo come in in a, an interesting way. Um, we can choose to keep this as one logo, which I'm going to do. You can also choose to make the background appear first and then put your letters in later. Um, 
yeah, I'm just going to pre-compose this just because I can. Oh, layer, sorry. Pre-compose. Control Shift C apparently. And we are going to call out precomp one. It doesn't even matter. If you want to change the name, you can do it here. And it's called logo. And the funny thing about the logo is that it doesn't exist up until the last moment in this video. So let's say 20 seconds. So if you want to speed it up, by the way, you can pre-compose the entire thing and then do something. So currently it just comes in like that. That is, of course, super ugly, which is fine. Um, now, if you like that, that is exactly what you should do. But I don't want it like that. I want to have this to 0% opacity and then over the next two seconds it's going to go to 100%. But we're going to go to the one second, so where it exists for one second. And then instead of it being, oh, I currently messed up one of the values apparently. Yeah, this one is supposed to be over here. So um, instead of this being 49%, which is supposed to be 50%, but okay, so come on, zoom in more so we stop doing these crazy crap mistakes yeah instead of 50% I want this to be 75% for example so what it then looks like is it comes in faster and then kind of fades out you can also do it the other way around so instead of 75 you can make this into 25, which I think looks better. So we're going to do that, which means that it's going to fade in really slowly and then bam, it's going to be there. Well, it's not actually bam, but yeah, you get the point. It will fade in slowly and then faster. And actually we're way too, f too f fast here because this one is still growing. So I want that to be done before I do anything. And that is over here. So 23 seconds is where my logo is going to start. And that is going to come in and just sit there. You can of course do a wipe, you can do a fade in as I said, you can do a well, as I made, I should say. You can do a separate thing, so you can do the background first and then the foreground afterwards. You can do the background fading in and then a wipe for the foreground. Uh, all different things. The thing is, you just need to learn the techniques on how to make things like this. And then afterwards, yeah, you can do whatever you want with them. That is kind of the lesson I'm trying to teach you. So lots of layers today. But hopefully you um, you enjoyed it, and the end result I think is pretty good. So uh, definitely a nice colorful picture with a clear and bright logo, and yeah, that may be exactly what you want. So I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.